I get to be here. How about you guys? There, there's two reasons I'm excited to be in Scotland. Um, one is sort of personal and one relates to uh, our business. I'll tell you the personal one first. Um, a number of years ago, actually 2006, there was a professor uh, at Oxford that made a claim that my paternal ancestors uh, were captured as slaves between the Black and Caspian Sea and brought by Vikings to this area and then eventually settled in the Lake region. I can't tell you for sure if that story is true, but I've enjoyed it and it's something you can actually Google. Uh, if you're bored, and you can uh, actually see that in the London Times and the New York Times. So, so I'm excited to be here where my ancestors may have once uh, gone through the streets, although they couldn't have probably afforded my scotch. Um, the second reason is that this is the home and final resting place of Adam Smith. So if you haven't gone over to see it, uh, this is the monument to Adam Smith, which is just a 15 minute walk away in the Old Town area. And as I think most of you know, I'm, I'm an undergraduate econ major. I'll, I'll tell a little bit about that story in a few minutes as well. Uh, but he's really the father of modern economics. Um, he produced his, his most famous treatise in, in 1776, was an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, which we typically refer to simply as the wealth of nations. And this is a book that really resonated with me uh, when I was studying economics. He, he talks about how you can improve the wealth of nations by dividing labor instead of us each producing everything that we need, which is very inefficient. If we divide labor and we specialize, we can actually produce more and then trade and improve society as a whole. He was very much of the mind that there wasn't a fixed buy out there, that by being efficient, by being productive and by trading, you can increase the size of the pie for everybody. And that's a story that really resonated with me. That's in contrast to the previous school of thought, which was mercantilism, where they basically thought there was a fixed pie out there and you had to grab as much as you could for yourself and hold on to it. And that the market forces and those types of things were not as important. So what Adam Smith is saying here is that we, we improve prosperity, we improve, improve wealth for all by engaging in economic activity, business activity. Um, I started my undergraduate career as a biology major with the intent of going into medicine. I had no interest in business, although my uh, uncle was an entrepreneur, my mother was a small business person as well, and my fraternity brothers, uh, about a third of them were in Norton at the time, and they kept trying to convince me to switch from arts and sciences into the business school. And I was reluctant to do that because I wanted to do something that was good for society. I didn't want to learn how to make money. Uh, but uh, they had a health economics program and since I was interested in medicine, I had to take a couple of econ courses in order to get into the health economics course. So I took micro and macro. And that's where I learned these types of principles, that actually business activity is good for society. By specialization, trade, and investment, we can actually improve the well-being of more and more people. So it's really what got me interested in business. So I did econ as an undergraduate. I went to business school uh, at the graduate level, practiced public accounting for a number of years, became partner, and then said, yeah, I, I really like doing this. I enjoy working with my clients, but I prefer to have an influence on more people. So I decided to go back and get my PhD and become a professor, much like most of you. If you think about it, most of you have either worked in business or would have had opportunities to go work in business and probably make a lot more money than you're making at your institution. So why are you at your business schools? You're there in order to have an influence on your students, help make their lives better, and in the process, help make society better. So business schools, historically, have been a strong force for good. What most people don't know is Adam Smith had a previous book, and it was actually rumored to be his favorite. This was published in the late, the late 1750s, maybe 1759, and it was the theory of moral sentiments. And it was all about mankind being empathetic for others and having a moral conscience. And what he believed was that it wasn't something you had to teach or learn, that humans were by their nature social beings and wanted to help each other. 
And by helping each other, both the help and the help or become more satisfied. And so I think that's very important. And that is relayed in AACSB's vision today. And it's we, we updated our mission and vision about three years ago, really going back to our roots, that our vision is to transform business education for global prosperity. Basically change for good. We want to continually make sure that we're changing business education so that it is relevant and productive for society as a whole. We also produced in 2016 a paper called uh, Collective Vision for Business Education. We talked about everything that's going on in the world, digital transformation, disruption, and we said, what are the major opportunities for business school? You, you've heard some of these from us before, catalysts for innovation, co-creators of knowledge, lifelong learning, all of those are important, but one of those five enablers is an enabler of global prosperity. Business schools can do more to help society. And we need to do a better job of highlighting what we've already done in the past and what we're doing today. So um, I think everybody knows we were founded about 100 years ago, just over 1916. 17 forward-thinking business school deans got together and said we need to have some standards for the business schools that have been recently coming into existence. Why is it that business schools came about in collegiate schools of business? Previously, business was taught through trade schools or through apprenticeship programs. Why did they need to be in a school of business? The reason was, or within a university, the reason was that people would get a broader education, study things like philosophy, and understand the concepts, the relationship between business and society. That's why we came about in collegiate schools of business. And we don't want to lose that thought. It's important for people to be exposed to those other things. It's not just about making money. In 1919, about three years later, is when we first voted on our first set of standards for curriculum. So 100 years ago. I hope you'll attend the annual business meeting this afternoon, 100 years later where you'll hear from Karen Beck Dudley on the work of our Business Accreditation Task Force and continuing to change the standards for good. And I think you'll see that there are also good changes. Um, we'll, we'll get your opinion on that this afternoon. So uh, what were those first standards about? Well, they were pretty simplistic. Uh, what did you need to know to practice in business uh, back at that time? A little bit of bookkeeping commercial geography, a knowledge of interest tables, and the ability to write with a legible hand with proper spelling. <laughs> Pretty simplistic. How many average faculty do you think those 17 business schools had back in the early 1910s? What would be your guess? About 14. Average faculty were 14 at that time. Um, how much, how, what do you think the average faculty population is in an ACSB accredited school around the world today? About 74, 75. If you look at total staff, it's actually 200, but full-time faculty about 74. So substantial growth. Uh, what do you think dues were in 1919? Uh, <laughs> $25 a year. Truly a bargain. Okay. Uh, what do you think dues are today? Well, maybe we should not. <laughs> They will leave that to the annual business meeting. We're not going to ask for an increase, by the way. All right. What about today? Today, it's much more complex. All right? It's no longer a little bit of bookkeeping, a little bit of uh, commercial uh, uh, geography. Today, there's an enormous breadth and depth of knowledge, skills, and abilities that are needed in our curriculum. So it's much more complex. Data analytics, derivatives, uh, you know, data analysis for accounting, uh, those things are becoming more important. So today, we've never seen more of a dynamic environment than what we need to have in our curriculum. So it's not something where we can update our curriculum once every five years or every 10 years. In some cases, you're having to update it in real time. I think uh, Karen would tell you this her experience at Santa Clara. Sometimes you're working on your syllabus throughout the semester. 
to keep up to date with, with what is happening in this dynamic business environment. So uh, business schools are focused on doing things that are, of course, for good. A, a very common conversation across many of our business schools, particularly those that are involved with organizations we support like ERLI and ERME, are focused on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. What can we do to improve society? What can the school do? What can we do in our communities? If you go back to the Millennial Development Goals from 2000 to 2015, we were able to raise a billion people out of poverty around the world. The percentage of people living in extreme poverty went from 47% down to 14%. That's great, but what the Sustainable Development Goals want to do is they want to eliminate poverty. So no poverty is goal number one. Goal number two, zero hunger. Goal number three, good health and well-being. Number four, quality education. So all of these are things that business schools are talking about and actually doing things about. So what are we doing? Lots of things. On the research uh, front, Karen described to you our innovations that inspire. This particular year's challenge is about the research that business schools are doing and how it's helping society. She mentioned the poster sessions this afternoon. I would encourage you to go take a look at those and see what it is that business schools are doing with their research to contribute to society. There's another group we support. If you're not familiar with this, please visit their website. It's the RRBM, the Responsible Research and Business and Management Group. This is a group of leading scholars that have gotten together and set forth seven principles for what our research should look like. It should be rigorous, but it should also be relevant. And their number one of seven is it should have an impact on society. So this is very important. As an organization we support, you can sign on to it. What we want to do is we want to change the nature of research. So it's not something that only half a dozen other academics would do. That it's something that actually has an impact on society. So it's a great effort. We're also infusing it in our classes. We all teach ethics, very often integrated throughout our curriculum. We also are having student groups go out and work in our community. So there's some great examples that we've highlighted in Biz Ed Magazine, where business school students, for example, in Mumbai, are going out into the slums and improving things. They're creating products to get water in places that have difficulty with water or internet or light. So there are great opportunities for students to work on projects that are benefiting society. We're seeing those going on in business schools around the world, the US, India, everywhere. So I'm going to close with questions, while our, our vision says that we're for global prosperity, you can talk about global prosperity in a number of different ways. Sure, it's about wealth, it's about increasing the wealth for individuals who are running businesses, but they're also creating jobs and increasing wealth for others. So we want to make sure that when we're talking to our students, we infuse into them this idea that they need to have a moral compass in business. It's not just about what they're doing for themselves and doing for their family, but what are they doing for their communities and for society as a whole. It really goes back to the roots of why business schools came about within universities to begin with and the roots of ADCSB. Uh, so with that, thank you, and we have like two minutes for questions. Yeah.